Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Margin and Majest with myself, Noshina Ghani, and a very interesting guest that's been with us before, Fatima Mutala from Binte's Kitchen. Well, Fatima, I'm super excited about our episode today. Very unusual, very different to the last discussion we've had. But today, we're in Binte's Kitchen and we have a look at how it all happens, where it happens, and all the exciting uh, little recipes that Fatima is going to be sharing with us today. So, Assalamu alaikum, Fatima, and welcome back to Modern and Modest. And it's great to have you back on our show. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for having me. Um, it's an honor. And I can't wait to share my recipes with all of well, you. I'm super excited that this time I can actually have a look at what goes into these amazing yeah. <laughs> dishes that you come up with. And uh, the fact that they're so healthy and, and we have the option. You know? So Fatima, uh, before we get into what we're going to be preparing today, maybe mm -hmm. you can just share with us um, how you choose healthy alternatives. Because most of us are very conscious of weight, about changing lifestyle or living more organic. So you can help our viewers with that. So um, as we spoke about in my previous episode, this entire lifestyle change was because of my obesity and my health issues, which is why the passion came in to create all of these things for better gut life and for better life on the whole. So now being like winter months, instead of going for like maybe a soji porridge, which is such a like comforting winter cereal, um, we're going to do a low carb version of that with absolutely no soji in it. But it's so warm, it's so comforting and it's excellent for the gut. Also, um, I've chosen to not have dairy in my diet. So there's a lot of like kids, adults that have chosen that route nowadays where they've cut out dairy completely from their um, lifestyle. So, you know, it's about balance. I'm not saying cut it out completely. Sure. Um, but if you're into low carb dieting, then, you know, you can add almond milk or rice milk or whatever milk you actually do want. So that's what we're going to be making for breakfast um, this morning. It's absolutely quick and easy and perfect for moms on the run. Now, Fatima, coming back to prepping in the kitchen. Now, not all of us enjoy being in the kitchen or we don't have the know-how of how to put things together. So what tips can you share with uh, a beginner in the kitchen or someone that just doesn't like being in the kitchen? Well, go for easy recipes that don't require like taking out huge machines um, and then, you know, that just is already so daunting to take out a baking machine and now starting to look at recipes that say, um, a, you know, a quarter milligram of this or whatever. So just go for easy recipes that say half a cup, quarter cup, one cup, throw everything in, mix it up and voila, you have like cookies. So if you're a beginner, um, I would say opt for easy recipes that just require throwing literally everything into a bowl um, and incorporating the Things like that. So I'm going to try and do that today and make it easier um, for a beginner who is opting towards a low carb life or a healthier alternative life. Okay, you raised something rather interesting about most people wanting to uh, move away from dairy as such. And growing up, we know that that calcium intake is so yes. important for our kids and later in life for us as women. Uh, when we when we get older, you want to um, ensure that you've had a fair amount of calcium intake because you don't want to end up with osteoporosis and so forth later in life. Now, you've mentioned your alternatives, um, almond milk, um, rice uh, milk as an option. What is the calcium content in there and would it be as equivalent to dairy? It wouldn't be so equivalent as that of dairy, but remember you're getting um, healthy fats mm -hmm. as well as you are getting protein. So um, very important also is to make your almond milk at home, um, which I don't always do. I'm going to be honest, being so busy. Sure. Um, it's just much more natural and has a lot of more like, um, like less preservatives, I would say, than that bought in the box. Mm -hmm. So I like like looking at the label first, turning the box around and seeing exactly what's in, like your calcium intake, your um, protein intake or whatever. And that way, you know, you're getting like wholesome goodness um, from what you're buying. Okay. So the understanding is that breakfast is the most important meal yes. and you've got to start your day with having that energy um, to focus throughout the day. Yeah. And I find that most of us tend to skip that breakfast because you're always rushed or you dropping off kids at school yes. or, you, or you're going to work and, and you tend to miss that important meal of yeah. the day. 
Now, your recipe or your cereal that you're going to be showing us today, how long does it actually take for you to prep? That's one. And can you make a whole lot maybe to, to last you for an entire week so that you know that over the weekend I can prepare this and then it's just easy on the go for me during the so, week? So I wouldn't really make this and prep this because remember this is low carb mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't really stay well right. um, in the fridge. Sure. However, if you're not into low carb, um, you could make an overnight oats and that would last like throughout the whole week mm -hmm. so prep your oats overnight in almond milk um, cacao whatever and store that in the fridge mm -hmm. and then in the morning just add your toppings in little glass console bottles and perfect on the go so you can opt for that if you're not okay. into low carb um, and that's also perfect pre or post gym mm -hmm. uh, because it's loaded with like lots of vitamins and things sure. like that um, and so this is just another alternative for those that want to count their carbs the cereal so um, and it's so easy if you have all of the ingredients it's literally literally throwing everything into a pan and leaving it to just form into a cereal and you're done okay sounds rather interesting yeah. <laughs> so uh, Fatima um, alhamdulillah as as Muslim woman we blessed with tips on a dress code in the kitchen or certain um, du'as that you could you know recite before cooking so tell us why this is so important and do you exercise this at home so um, Islam is a religion of pureness so we are taught and we're so used to it as Muslims to uh, make wudu five times a day so for us to get into the kitchen and wash our hands continuously is really no train smash because we're so used to it and well we're learning about hygiene now like you know if you watch all the cooking shows and they're like make sure you wash your hands but we already it's instilled in us from the time we're little and it's because of our wudu so um, that's what we tend to do is to wash our hands all the time um, and to recite ya subuhu ya kudusu ya ghafuru ya wududu continuously while cooking and it's a source of baraka and a source of love inshallah and it's a sunnah so this is something that we can do and instill into our kitchen um, and at the same time innama al a'malu bin niyyah so every action is on your intention alhamdulillah so um, if we make that intention that we are cooking for our family to please our husband to please our family already it's a baraka and already it's a sawab just incidentally so um, Allah has made it so easy for us as women that just a simple act of cooking becomes an act of ibadah I suppose it also puts you in a in a different mode the energy that you're putting into the food is what you get yes, out of it 100% so it's very important yes. um, how you mentally prepare yourself before going into the kitchen and preparing these dishes for your yes. family so Fatima we chatted about the importance of breakfast I can't wait to see how you put together a healthy alternative <laughs> to soji porridge for winter but what about uh, lunch meals or that in between snack so what, yeah. what are we going to be preparing today? So you spoke about prep. So you, this can be easily prepped um, like during the week. So what I do is I take my veg and I just spiral it, whether it's like carrot, butternut, um, beetroot, um, and I keep them aside. And so you can easily prepare like Buddha bowls. So today we're gonna make a Buddha bowl, which, which will consist of all our veg um, and some sauteed prawns on the top. And that's just on the go so you're actually eating like raw veg with just sauteed prawns on the top and it's actually so wholesome and so filling um, and it's all in a bowl and and it's trending so okay yeah and what about the in-between snack you spoke about uh, cookies and yes. um, most of us tend to have the sweet tooth yes. where you could be following a, an eating plan but you tend to crave for that yes. little cookie to go with a cup of coffee yeah. or tea so what is your healthy so um, today we're going to be making a peanut butter chuck chip cookie mm -hmm. um, which is literally only 3.5 grams of carbs per cookie and has absolutely no refined sugar in it okay. so um, just the smell that emanates from these cookies when you bake them also is just makes it such a festive feeling in the house also um, and so you can make these and literally grab one and on the go also so you you like that sugar craving or whatever is like curbed 
so um, that's also nice as a, as a dipper because um, as Indians we're so used to <laughs> dipping into our coffee or tea so instead of having something that's loaded with refined sugar you can have these um, as a coffee break in between with the you know yeah okay so we'll take a quick ad break and we're back uh, I think you guys should start getting your pens and writing pads out to start taking these interesting recipes and we're going to be stepping into Binte's kitchen and discussing more about the ingredients and the prep and I think my favorite part would be dunking those biscuits in a cup <laughs> yeah. of coffee and after the ad break we'd be chatting more to you with regards to those recipes <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Modern and Modest and I'm hoping you've got your pens and your notepads out and as you can see we're here in Binte's kitchen with Fatima Mutala and Fatima I'm waiting to see okay. what this breakfast is all about if it could replace soji porridge it's got to be amazing so please talk us through it okay so I've got your ingredients here these um, it is um, two tablespoons of coconut flour mm -hmm. Four tablespoons of granulated coconut, half a cup of almond milk, one tablespoon of xylitol, and one tablespoon of almond butter. That's it, and it's easy as ABC. We're going to just throw it into the pot, like so. All of our ingredients. So you you haven't put in any butter nothing. or anything in your pot. Absolutely nothing. And what heat would you be um, using? So currently, put it a little high. Um, and then you're just going to throw in your almond butter and we're going to the heat about high so I'm going to move it a little bit from the stove just to drop the heat a bit and put in the remainder of my ingredients right and let that cook on low the xylitol okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it a quick mix as you can see it's already formulating into a nice cereal okay smells divine <laughs> yes so just like um an oats or like a um you know soji porridge um you would adjust the milk to what sure. the consistency that you like so as you can see now it's slightly thickish so this isn't the consistency that i like so almond milk again i'm just gonna put some in to sort of make it into a cereal consistency and so what would you say the calorie intake on a bowl of, of your low carb breakfast would be? Um, this would be like about three grams or four grams per portion. So I'm popping it back onto the heat. I've lowered the heat and I'm just going to literally cook this for like two minutes and it's done. Um, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to plate that into our bowl and enjoy. So you've used coconut flour, we've used desiccated coconut, Yes. we've used almond milk, xylitol and yes. almond butter. That's it. Can you substitute the coconut flour for almond flour perhaps or no. nipped almonds? Does it's it not going to give coconut? you this um, kind of hearty cereal feel that we want that we were talking about okay. um, when we spoke earlier on. So we want to have the feeling of a warm winter porridge with less calories mm -hmm. and less carb intake. And we so literally, that literally going took to about one so to quick, two minutes. So quick, and it's so hearty and so wholesome. Um, and we're literally going to now dress this all up and make it all zhuzh. Um, so we're going to pour our cereal in. And we're going to dress it up with some blueberries on one side. Mm -hmm. Yum. And we're using some um, Bin's Kitchen um, Banting Granola, again low carb, and cereal's done. So would you need to, if, if, if someone has a very sweet tooth, mm -hmm. can you add a drizzle of honey on top? You could or? add, um, if you're following a low carb diet, depending, Banting Paleo Keto, sure. so I'm not sure like honey, but maple syrup is a must. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not doing a low carb particularly, then honey. Um, organic raw honey is perfect but really it's sweet enough the berries bring in the sweetness mm -hmm. also um, and the xylitol brings in sweetness also so yeah so I'm here in Binte's kitchen and I must let you viewers know this breakfast smells divine and 
I would think of it as a warm winter pudding. Would you yes. be able to use that as opposed to you just breakfast? You could use that and um, you could taste it even if you want. Um. <laughs> now, coming to the, the, the mixture, the coconut flour, the almond, uh, um, the desiccated coconut, you've got quite a bit of ingredient that goes in there. The peanut butter gives you the protein. Yeah, the well, almond butter. So the, we use, Sorry, almond butter. Yeah. So can you substitute that for any other butter? Does you could. You could almond? use organic peanut butter, again, with no um, sugar in it. Okay. So I use this range because it has no, um, like, MSG. It has no, it's just peanut butter that's whizzed into a butter. All right. So that's it. Now, should an individual have a bowl of um, low-carb breakfast like this, will it sustain that individual until lunchtime. Yes. So the trick to this was the almond butter. Okay. That's good. The healthy fats that's going to sustain you for a longer period to of keep time. You fuller for yes. Longer. So you okay. did ask. So you're not adding any butter to this. Yes. So this would be your healthier alternative of butter that you would be adding into your cereal. Okay. So that was Binte's Kitchen low carb breakfast. Um, it smells divine. So I've got a very sweet tooth and I love desserts. So I'm actually going to try this as a warm winter pudding, Fatima. That's yes. amazing. <laughs> All right. So once we, we've done now your breakfast and um, you chatted about mm -hmm. those dippers and dunkers, those, that yes. biscuit dough. Could you share with our viewers how we'd go about making this easy okay. to go cookies? So this is so simple. I kid you not. We're going to just place our ingredients here so that you can write them and make them at home for your kids and we will provide you with the carb count as well. So for this we literally use, I'm just going to get a spoon quick. So what we, we would do Fatima is if we could just share the ingredients we're using, mm -hmm. the quantities, get our viewers to take down the yes. ingredients and then we'll catch a quick ad break and when we're back you can then write the method down so that you can have a look at how it's all done. Would okay. that be perfect for you? Great. Yeah. So um, we're using a half a cup of organic peanut butter, we're using a quarter cup of dark nibs, quarter cup of xylitol, one tablespoon of um, vanilla essence, two organic eggs mm -hmm. and a half a cup of coconut flour. Now if you notice an organic egg, you can see the color is already very different. Sure. Um, and when we say organic, we mean grain fed. So these chickens have been grain fed, not like with like the normal chickens that you would be found. Already you're putting wholesome goodness into your gut just from these choices. So then again, these are your ingredients, pop them into a bowl, mix it and it's as easy as that. No machine required at <laughs> okay. all. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to just repeat those quantities for our viewers. So we are using ha half a cup of peanut butter, um, a quarter cup of dark nibs, a quarter cup of xylitol, one tablespoon of vanilla essence, two organic eggs, and then we are using half a cup of coconut flour. So then those are our ingredients and now we're just going to easily pop all of this into our dish. Um, remember we spoke earlier on about our fingers and all of that being washed. We've got to do that considering that we're going to be using our hands to um, literally mix everything up. So it's as easy as popping all of this into a dish. And I like to break my egg into a separate dish just in case we have some nasties, then we're not adding it into um, our actual mixture. Mm -hmm. So that's a little tip that grandma taught us that we apply into our daily life now. So if you look at the color of the egg also, mm. it's really different. So we do that. And I'm going to just add, this is the trick. I'm not adding all my nerves. I'm saving some nibs for later to add on to the top of my cookie. So then all I do is I just bring this together. So how many cookies would you get out of this recipe? Six. All right. Yeah, you would get six um, medium to large cookies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want like a smaller cookie, um, you can just make them smaller. Then you would get 12. Oh. Yeah. So as you can see, our dough is already like formulated. Mm -hmm. Um, taking shape really well. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. And it's literally done. So the cookie dough is ready. 
if you guys need to know the consistency of the cookie dough it's like it's it's clumpy mm -hmm. but it's also slightly wet so, so would you then just spoon these you on could a, scoop, on a tray. scoop okay. it with the ice cream scoop you could use your fingers you could get the kids involved it's mm. so fun kids love doing this mixing yeah. and placing it into a tray so they love it so it's just so simple any beginner could do this um, and then we're going to pop it onto a tray which we have lined um, with parchment so you've preheated your oven yes. prior to this and so, temperature for the so I've preheated my oven to 180 degrees Celsius um, and that's in the oven and then I'm going to just uh, I prepared my tray here mm -hmm. with some parchment paper and then as we spoke about we just we can scoop it like that um, onto our tray literally and we will be getting six of these so it just settles into a shape you you could shape it remember i'm um, a low carb baking is very different to um, traditional. normal traditional yes. baking so you've got to use your fingers to sort of shape and form and things like that because there's no refined flour um, in in here so you're gonna have to use your spoon or your fork or your sure. fingers if you're making for your family use your fingers I mean we are we cooking daily for our yes. family anyway so um, and why I'm preparing this now after breakfast is that once you pop that into the oven then you can start prepping for lunch or prepping for supper or whatever while this is already baking in. Well I guess it's it's so quick so even for that unexpected guest yes. um, if you just want to pop a few cookies in your oven Perfect. it can be done in a yes. short space of time. And really they don't need to all be like one like particular shape yeah. and whatever if it's for your family and this little bit is for licking so you can <laughs> lick them up and enjoy to get the kids to enjoy that um, and then we sp I'm just going to wash my hands very quickly um, and then I'm going to show you guys that um, the leftover um, nibs that we spoke about earlier on we're going to take them and literally just pop them onto the top and this is where we spoke about shaping them mm -hmm. so we're going to top that here shape them press them you could even use a fork and okay. just yeah so we'll do a quick ad break and whilst we're on that ad break Fatima is going to be popping these lovely cookies in the oven and when we're back we'll have a look at what they look like assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Binti's kitchen with Fatima Mutala and myself Noshina Ghani so Fatima tell us what are we prepping now so we're going to make a low carb roti we all love our rotis so we can make a low carb roti now that we could enjoy with a curry or as a wrap even mm -hmm. um, and this is literally 2.5 grams of carbs per wrap so for that we need two tablespoons of psyllium husk pop that into your bowl you need a quarter teaspoon of baking soda you need a half a cup of um, coconut flour you need one tablespoon of olive oil and how many would you get out of this uh, recipe you would get I think six or maybe four okay right mm -hmm. um, and then you need one cup of lukewarm water we're literally going to throw all of this into a dish again an easy recipe that incorporates really well um, and then we're just going to formulate our dough and as you can see it's already taking shape mm -hmm. and forms very quickly right i'm going to now use my hands and there's a little bit so of your, the soda your left consistency here. is that your traditional uh, roti dough consistency um it, it would be it, it would be like a dough consistency not like a traditional dough consistency mm -hmm. because that has like refined flour in it but it would take form as you can see it's already like taking shape mm -hmm. um there we go it's it just form it into a nice clump of dough right and i'm going to show you what we're going to do and I'm going to show you the listeners um, and the viewers how um, it forms so that we have an idea. Okay. So. okay, so it's formed if you see, if you poke your finger in it, right? 
it's like a dough yeah very very much a dough yeah mm -hmm. so from this now what we're going to do is we're going to cut it into four portions okay that's your four rotis simple so so you get them all the same the size. same size okay. so that's the trick to getting them into the same size but now remember for low carb we can't roll it on a granite or anything because it's going to stick so you take two pieces of parchment paper um, and you're going to now form this into a little ball like so take the other portion on the top so take your rolling pin and now we're literally going to make our roti and the dough doesn't break no it okay. wouldn't break here because now we're using our parchment paper how, uh, how many centimeters how thick would you um, you can go as thick or as um, thin as oh. you want right so for this I'm going to also show you a trick just keep rolling don't worry about the shape just keep going keep going keep going keep going so whilst you're rolling mm -hmm. I presume you've put your um, put hot plate on the and on, yeah. what, what, what heat are we looking I at? I put it currently on six because you can see the steam coming out. I'm just going to lower it. Um, I'm generally used to using gas but today we're going to use this. So you can take a pot holder um, and just cut out a shape here. I'm just going to use my knife because I'm like used to it. Okay. So just trim the sides Just trim off. the sides off to kind of get um, a nice kind of circle it's not going to be so perfect but the roti will be perfect sure. take the excess amount pop that in there right um, into your pan you can add a little bit of olive oil instead of butter or whatever is that olive I'm sorry coconut, coconut oil, oil. Ma. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to open this coconut oil how much would you say you I'm would just going to use it? literally you're going to see that much okay and just to baste the pan a little bit and I'm going to still be left with some on the back of my spoon mm -hmm. which I will baste on the top of that literally take it out and onto your pan and then that will cook on both sides so we've um, we're going to turn it now. Um, there we go. See? Okay. It's so perfectly cooked. And you just um, remember we spoke about the leftover yes. um, coconut oil. Now's the time that I would just baste that with a little bit of coconut oil um, and let the bottom of the roti cook. And they literally will be done. You can use them as wraps. You can use them as a roti. You can use it as a paratha, anything. Um, you can literally take one roti add a filling take another one top it and then you would have a paratha also okay, so it it tastes really yum and remember it has no so it's, it's very out. versatile it's from very a wrap versatile. to a roti to a savory yes as well. okay yes so as you can see both sides are equally cooked and now we're going to um place them all onto our pan and then our rotis are done okay. um do these need to be um, prepared and served fresh does it still taste as good if you serve it a bit later yes now this we spoke earlier on about prep this can be prepped in the morning um, stored in a ziplock for up to a week okay great. yes okay so Fatima we've prepared a healthy alternative to traditional roti yeah. we've made yummy cookies and I see you've got a nice portion of prawns and maybe tell us what are we actually going to be doing with these prawns? So we're going to be doing a quick prawn satay which is quickly tossed onto the stove for our Buddha bowl. So here we have 100 grams of prawns that are like already shelled and peeled. Um, in here I have um, one tablespoon of lemon juice. So will this be freshly squeezed lemon or um, can you, you could use, use the any lemon juice? Could use. Okay, um, and then I have a tablespoon of the Suji's red ginger garlic masala. And why I use that again is it has no preservatives in it as I said and no MSG or anything. A tablespoon of crushed garlic into that. Um, and then some olive oil so I'm gonna use another tablespoon of that mm -hmm. straight into the bowl 
um, a little bit of pepper. So this I just eyeball. I would roughly say it's like almost a tablespoon. Is that your oh, crushed black pepper? Um, it's crushed lemon pepper. All right. Lemon pepper, the rubber. Just to get one. that tasty yes. taste. Okay. So before I add my salt, I like to just mix this all up together. And there we go. This is the consistency you're looking for. Did right? you add salt to Yes, that? now I add salt last. And I'm going to add, I normally add Himalayan salt. I'm a little bit out of Himalayan salt, but mm -hmm. we can just add a normal salt and literally a pinch, mm -hmm. not too much. So mix that again and pour it into your prawns. And then we're just going to mix this all up till they're all fully coated. As you can see. So if uh, an individual chooses not to use prawns, could you substitute with chicken, chicken fillet, or tofu for okay. vegetarians, right. anything, and the exact same marinade you could use. Okay. So once that's done, we're going to take our coconut oil and place that into our pot, and then we're going to take our prawns and toss it into the pot. So once our prawns are um, like marinated into here, we're going to take our coconut oil and place it into our pot and then we're going to saute our prawns. So how much of coconut oil would you use? Uh, so for, for this I'm using like almost a tablespoon, um, like a nice healthy amount of fat. That we so Fatima, the, the marinade oh. now, does this need, can this be marinated immediately and cooked or would you say you need to prepare it a little while before it's for always the flavor better to, to prepare in. it in the morning and then around lunchtime just toss it um, and then your veg are prepared and then we'll prepare our okay. Buddha bowl um, but now just for TV we're showing you guys live what the marinade looks like the consistency and all of that okay so we're going to the stove now um, we're going to take our tablespoon of coconut oil and place it onto our really nice hot pan and then we're going to take our prawns and we're going to, I'm going to move this a little bit again because it's really nice and hot. And I'm going to place our prawns literally. And I always love hearing the sizzle because the sizzle means yummy food coming up. And then get it. <laughs> so we're going to place our prawns in there. And we don't waste anything in this kitchen, so the, the leftover marinade is what we're going to use to saute our vegetables for the Buddha bowl. Oh, so we, we're not adding that to the No, bowl. no, we're going to leave it in this bowl here and I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of use this as a dressing okay. for the vegetables. So we're literally going to toss this in our pan till our prawns are done. And so how, how can you actually tell that your prawn is done? Prawns don't take long, they literally take like three minutes mm -hmm. per side. So you'll see it starts shrinking, um, getting a little pink, and then you know your prawns are done. Mm -hmm. You can see they're already like shrinking. So, and these are the de-veined um, and not shelled prawns. So they, um, they, might, they cook a lot quicker. Sure. Yeah, so just keep tossing, tossing. You can see everything kind of like formulating, um, the beautiful masala kind of sticking onto it. So, yeah. so whilst that is happening on the stove, yes. um, do you wait until all of that evaporates or do you need to keep some of the moisture behind? I keep just a little bit moisture behind, but while this is kind of cooking, I'm going to lower the heat. So I'm just going to top the prawns with some fresh herbs. Um, and here we're using chopped coriander. And, yeah, and you can see already, you know, that um, the prawns have glazed perfectly. Mm -hmm. They've stuck to the pan um, and they're cooking so well and they've shrunk completely to like quarter of the size. Okay, so we'll catch a quick ad break and we're back. Fatima is going to show us how we're going to prep the Buddha bowl with these amazing prawns that she's just prepared. Welcome back to Modern and Modest and here we are in Binte's kitchen with Fatima Motala. So Fatima, you've got all these yummy veggies. They look scrumptious the prawns smell amazing tell me what we're going to do with it so now we're preparing a buddha bowl what we've done is we've prepped the veggies already so we've got some spiraled zucchini for you we've got some spiraled beets and we've got some spiraled butternut all we're going to do is just place them into our bowl top it with the prawns and you've got really a healthy wholesome meal so this is what we're going to do we're going to take our zucchini you 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 know this this is this is you can you you optionally could toss this in a pan with a little bit of garlic and and whatnot but we're trying to keep it all vegan 
um, and we're trying to keep it raw because mm -hmm. sometimes it's also nice to have raw veg um, into your diet. So um, if you're not really a raw veg kind of person, then you can toss this in a little bit of whatever you want, right? So I'm literally going to do this. And no, Sheena, you know, you can use this to make spaghetti also. Okay. So um, instead of having like, you know, conventional spaghetti, mm -hmm. you could toss this in a little bit of garlic and olive oil and you could have an amazing spaghetti bolognese even. So you can see it's already. very colorful. Yes. Uh, so this is actually okay. called a rainbow Buddha bowl. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to use my hands again. Pop that in here. And you can already see it looks so so beautiful and so yummy and so colorful um, and then we're just going to take the leftover marinade that we had earlier on and we're going to masala our vegetables so that kind of gives all the flavor that you require um, and once you're done with that we're going to take our prawns and then we're going to pour, uh, place our protein in the middle so this Buddha bowl could, and actually, actually, could actually serve as a main meal as well as a starter. Yes. Because um, you've got your veggies and you've got a bit of your... Yeah. Your um, and then we well. just topped it up with some micro herbs. Mm -hmm. You could top it up with some nuts or um, berries or whatever. But this is just such a lovely wholesome lunch meal. Um, the, and these are actually trending at the moment. So you would pay an arm and a leg for this any place, but it can easily be made at home. So this is a Buddha bowl by Ben's Kitchen, made for Nashina and team. <laughs> so Fatima, we've prepared the Buddha bowl, looked scrumptious and looked very healthy. But now we've got these rotis here. What are we going to be serving the rotis with? So we have a little bit remained of prawns here and I thought why not turn it into a prawn chutney. So what we've done is we've chopped up some um, onions and we've chopped up some dhania. And we're going to throw the onions literally into our pot. So here we go. You remember the pot's already on. You throw it, you can hear the sizzle. Right. To this, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Just to get the onions going. And we're recycling. In the same pot we're recycling, we're using the remainder um, prawns and we are literally recycling. Um, so in a bowl I have a tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm going to take another, like I would say half a tablespoon of Suji's ginger garlic red masala. I'm going to give that a quick mix, right? Um, and then I'm going to add that to my onion mixture. Mm -hmm. Literally that's all it takes. You could alternatively use um, a fish and prawn masala. They do have a fish and prawn masala as well, but we're just using what we have right now. So um, to this, I'm going to add in um, a half a cup of chopped tomatoes. Throw that in. So your chopped tomatoes seem to be in a sauce. Would that be uh, canned tomatoes? Uh, yes, so food? we use the canned tomatoes for today just to make it easy and less time consuming. And literally, you know, Sheena, this is almost like cooking up so nicely. Um, and it's going to taste so beautiful with our roti and it's almost done. Once the tomatoes kind of water down, um, it's ready. So that was just a few minutes. And, and how quick that curry. was. Yeah, you would have like a prawn chutney, I would call it, um, to serve with your roti. And we will garnish this with some coriander and we're good to go. So now, Sheena, our prawn chutney is already ready, as you can see, um, to serve with our low-carb rotis. And the smells so good, I'm just resisting from <laughs> having some myself. But yeah, that was so easy. We recycled one pot um, and we recycled the prawns also. So we got two meals, um, one Indian, one Asian, out of one prawn and that looks so good okay so prawn chutney and we could substitute prawn for chicken for yes. tofu and you could still enjoy that with yes. your half roti or we could even turn that into a wrap you could turn it into well. this okay. wrap and and just to show you how pliable the roti mm -hmm. actually is you just have to okay and there we go
Well, we all set. We've got breakfast, we've got a Buddha bowl, we've got the main meal, and we've got the cookies. Wow, that's amazing, Fatima. And all this happens at Bente's Kitchen. Yes. So, Fatima, with these being your healthy alternatives, maybe um, let us recap with our viewers that um, how do you see this substituting your soji porridge from a nutritionist perspective, you know, just from nutritional value from that perspective? Um, tell us more about this dish, the calories, um, the low carb, what actually goes into here? Okay, so we spoke earlier on about the ingredients that go into here, um, as opposed to um, like mealy meal or soji which is um, really not good for your gut this has such simple ingredients like your coconut flour um, and it has no refined sugar so all we've added in here is so little um, xylitol and then you would get the sweetness from the berries so your palate becomes adjusted to non-refined sugar. So we've got a very balanced breakfast bowl. Yes. You've got your fiber, you've got yes. your nuts as your protein, you've got, protein, yeah. you've got your um, fruit which enhances the flavor yes, and gives it more of that yeah. sweet sweetening. And you could use sweetener. like fruits of the season. So okay. whether it's strawberries, whether it's gooseberries, whether it's whatever fruits you like, you know, we've just garnished it. And if something looks pretty, you just want to sure. eat it anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. So that was our substitute, a low carb um, breakfast bowl. So it looks delicious and you don't have to feel like you're on diet where, oh my word, I've got to stay away from the soji porridge and um, I've got to now get onto this low carb meal. So at Binti's Kitchen, you could still enjoy a healthy alternative and it looks tastier, I must say, than the bowl of soji porridge that we're so accustomed to. So now, if you could tell us more about the, the Buddha bowl, um, you know, the lunch that's on the go, or we could use it as a starter for an evening salad. Tell us yeah. more about nutritional so value there. You could use this, sorry. Okay. No, that's fine. Yeah. So you could use this as a um, salad, or you could use this as literally your meal, like your main lunch meal. So it just depends on you as a person, um, what would you like to do? Um, as I said, you could leave this raw um, mm -hmm. and, and then you would obviously, it would get more nutrients um, or you could just toss it in a little bit of olive oil, um, vegetable oil, or olive oil, or coconut oil, a little bit of garlic and then toss the veggies a bit if you're not a raw veggie kind of person. So um, the options, are so many. Okay. But what I like about your Buddha bowl is that it, you could easily introduce that Buddha bowl to kids. Kids love anything that's colorful yes. and the fact that you've made it so colorful it seems very inviting. So it's a nice yes. way to actually introduce uh, veggies to your kiddies and it's very simple to make in the morning for those moms that want to pack a healthy snack as an alternative to the typical sandwich that you'd pack for your kids. So after the Buddha bowl, we could still enjoy a lovely prawn curry or a tofu or chicken curry. That's yet a healthy alternative for your early dinner. So tell us more about that. Yeah. So we recycled our prawns mm -hmm. here. We had a little prawns left over and we were like, we have this lovely rotis. What are we going to do with them? So we quickly turned it into a prawn chutney. Um, so we could either use it as a wrap or just eat it totally Indian way where you break and you know sure. eat the prawn that way. Um, the choices are really as I said. And I guess with uh, most of mums working and on the go, we could actually prep this in the morning so you sort it out for lunch as well as in your yes. dinner meal is sorted. And when well. kids come from school, I'm sure you know this, they are like famished. So a quick cookie or a quick prawn wrap or a Buddha bowl that looks, as you said, so inviting, a rainbow bowl. Come kids, have a rainbow bowl. And that just, you know, it, it excites them. Um, and you've already prepped it and it's ready. So we're not faffing around as to what to make and, and all of that. Because your veg is already prepped during the week. Okay. And my favorite, your cookies. Yes. So give us nutritional value, carb content of cookies, and just more about... Um, about maybe options like you know do you can you add to that do you take away from that what can you do with that dough so with this the options are like so much 
we could turn this into a chocolate peanut butter cookie. Mm -hmm. So you could add um, cocoa flour to this, a uh, cocoa powder to this, cacao to this, and it would immediately become a chocolate peanut butter okay. cookie. Um, you could drizzle lint, dark lint, 90% lint on the top, um, and then it would immediately become more inviting to an adult. Uh, but remember, the more things you add, the more your carb count goes uh, up. So currently, it's just perfect. But I wanted to show you, Noshina, is can you hear that? Mm. I actually want to feel it. Yeah. So it feels quite uh, like a normal yes, cookie. Yes. Um, and yet it has no refined flour as you saw in mm. it. So the, and, and it has no butter, no traditional butter in it. So the only thing off dairy that it had in it was those two eggs that we did put in. Um, okay. and, and then these, would I would say, um, if we make them a little smaller, would roughly be um, 3.5 grams of carbs. Okay. Oh, okay, so that was Fatima Mutala from Bean Taste Kitchen. That's just 3.5 grams um, carb, would be called carb, it? Count, carb yes. count in your cookie. So you could still enjoy healthy options, um, enjoy the meals that you make, and Bean Taste Kitchen always to the rescue that shows us how to actually go about prepping these meals. Well, Fatima, thank, thank you, you for sharing this with our viewers, and we look forward to seeing you soon, and maybe you sure can, can share more tips on how we could live healthier lifestyles. Um, well, until next week, shukran for watching this episode. And if there's anything you'd like us to feature on Modern and Modest, please do inbox us on Instagram. Um, it goes at ITV. And we look forward to hearing from you soon. And inshallah, until next week, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.